Welcome back, DigiDs, to, that's right, a little bit of a different type of episode today. So I was a little bit unexpected and thrown off by the fact that this rocket was launching today. Now, we do play a lot of Kerbal Space Program, and we do play a lot of other types of kind of space games, Elite Dangerous, and I maybe eventually do Stellaris, but I'm a big advocate of space in general. And as you're seeing here in the background is the Starship the launch here on 420 elon being his you know funny billionaire self thought he'd be a joke to launch starship on 420 of course the the day that is most known in america for being like the weed day for anyone who is maybe outside of america may not necessarily know that but today we have seen the, the rocket has launched you know it's today it was funny enough i was sitting there i'm like you know i know that the first launch kind of failed and they said it was gonna try it in a few days I'm like hmm well, I wonder, wonder what's going on. I wonder if they are like, going to be like launching it today. I go to YouTube, I take a look, and immediately I see that they're live, and I just missed the launch. I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm like, well, heck, what did I just miss? But as you can see here, it actually did end up leaving the pad. As you can see here, as we're kind of closed up on the video, you can see a number of the engines have actually gone out. And now what we believe that to pr maybe be is that it kind of has a central like control unit like electrical system or like hydraulic unit i believe this is the last starship that is going to be using hydraulic units for its actuators for the engines um in a sense of like how they move around how they point how they swivel around on their axis right now they're all hydraulically driven meaning that you know it's all pushing liquids around that can leak and and whatnot and some of them can fail and i think that when they fail and they can't get the correct vectoring they end up shutting out the engine or they can like hit other build nozzles and stuff that turn out sections so you saw that a few of them kind of went out on one side but at this moment it, it is going up the engine is or the rocket is still going pretty solid we have we can see even in the bottom left they have a little nice infographic for us we have one two three at the top and then one in the center one on the bottom so we already have five engines out and still and right here is where we want to pay attention let's go ahead and pause so we have five engines out and the rocket is still doing perfectly fine it is getting out of the atmosphere no issues so that is something to be said about is the strength of these engines but right here let's go ahead and back it up we can go ahead and back it up frame by frame exactly when we have an issue with this rocket. Actually, let's just back up a little bit more. Wait for the moment. We see that we get some good camera views coming in. We get a good rocket. And as soon as we go to this section here where we can look at the inside of the bell nozzle in between the two separations of the stage, suddenly we have a lot of smoke. Now... Starship separates its stages, I believe, by a hydro. Or, I don't. They're not hydraulics. I believe they're just latches. I, I don't know exactly how the latches are driven. Though. I don't know if they are driven by hydraulics, if they're driven by electronically, or if they're like explosive bolts. But as we can see here, the latches did not detach, and we see a lot of smoke of either entered air. Maybe there's a leak. Something is being bursting open, or it could simply just be the air kind of just rushing in as the stage kind of separates. As you can see here. You start getting a little bit of sunlight coming in and off the hand off to the side and more sunlight starts shining in off to the side as well and this is when you can see the rocket starts to tip over and starts to tumble at that point the stage was supposed to separate and that's why they they kind of swap to the to the stage separation view to get the you know, get, get the camera angle of the two stages separating they swap to it exactly at that moment and now we see the rocket kind of tumbling so what was supposed to happen, it was going to separate, the second stage is going to, you know, technically the top stage is going to go on forward, and the second stage here is supposed to do a flip like it's doing now. Now, it should be noted, let's take a moment and pause. This is all kind of like an emergency review. <laughs> I, I was so caught off guard by this rocket launching, and I saw it, and I'm like, okay, immediately I got to make a video on this to see if I'm just going to make my predictions now what went wrong. So I think... What necessarily went wrong is that first we know that it was supposed to separate at that point. At that point, this bottom stage is supposed to flip around as we can see it kind of doing now. It's a little blurry in this video, it's very far away, but it's about halfway turned around sideways horizontal because it's supposed to do a flip around and then, you know, retrograde itself kind of touched softly back down in the water. I don't know about how softly, but it was going to touch down in the water and just kind of, you know, land in. As it's doing this flip back here is having trouble doing that simply because the top stage is still attached. So what should be noted here is two important things. One, is that this rocket is still held together. Even though this thing did not separate, it still has its top half and is tumbling at the moment. The rocket didn't fall apart. 
the biggest thing that I think most people were concerned about with Starship was mostly the structural integrity. The fact it is a just giant stainless steel tube. Although at this point, it is still kind of mostly pressurized. You know, the, the bottom stage still has enough to have some fuel to retrograde back. So it's still pressurized a bit. Top stage is still going to be mostly all the way pressurized because it hasn't even fired its engines yet. Right. So it's, so it's kind of like top heavy, which is why you see it kind of tumbling a lot. It doesn't have like the necessary thrust to deal with this at the at the top if we continue along we'll see as it starts to just kind of tumble around continuously you can see it, the engines are trying to fight that off we get a little bit of clarity now on the video get rid of some of that whiting effect which is nice but as you can see it's just kind of tumbling around it's firing off it's 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 monopropellant thruster is trying to get a better vector it's got wings on it still trying to hold on to itself and it's not going well it's just tumbling around but look still held together you don't see this thing tearing apart at the stage you, you don't see anything trying to, like, being broken apart in there. The thing's held together still while firing the rest of its fuel and not breaking apart. That is until, of course, the very end when they have to do the flight termination sequence. If we just fast forward about five seconds as it continuously just flips around into the atmosphere. It's a little bit harder to see, but it should become a lot more apparent any second now. Wait for it, and there we go. <laughs> we have a successful flight termination. So the first one was the bottom stage exploding, seeing that it didn't have a whole lot of fuel. And the second explosion being a little bit bigger, I believe, was the top stage exploding. Um, but yeah, this is a clear debris field. We had, you know, I'm not going to say we. They had, you know, a full flight path choreographed. They had made sure that no airplanes, no boats, no nothing. This was all set, of course, way ahead of time with the with the FFA, the, you know, the Flight Administration. Everyone's kind of cheering. We're all glad enough that it even got off the pad, right? We're all glad that the rocket even got off the pad, which is amazing. We, some of us were worried that it was gonna, just going to blow up before even leaving the launch pad, or, you know, the launch tower, blowing up the whole facility, right? But now, speaking of the launch pad, we are getting some photos that are coming out of what is the launch pad. And this is, shout out to Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, who will be actually an astronaut going on one of these first Hello Moon missions on this starship, who is also another well-known YouTuber, as you may all know, who has been doing a little bit of live coverage on this. And as we are seeing here on Twitter, we are seeing some photos of the launch pad. That there is the result afterward, which we are a little bit worried about, because if this perhaps, like, kind of shifted the entire launch pad a couple of degrees, if it took out enough debris, if it damaged the sediment, like the, the hard, over time, laid down sediment of the ground, it, it could be a real issue. This could be like months of rework. You know, who who knows how much damage actually was done to this launch pad. It's looking very scorched. Some parts are looking blown off, but it's not even talking about the pad itself. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of research and data they have gotten out of this launch and in direct just everything from the launch pad all the way to why the station is separate to the structural integrity of how it operated to how its TWR was doing even while flipping around all the data on its trajectories and what the calculations it took to try to correct itself. It still seemed somewhat stable, tumbling, sure, but it did its damnedest and I felt like it did all right as, as a first launch. This thing is the one of the largest rockets ever, the most thrust ever, the most rocket rockets in general i think it has what 32 or 33 rockets all firing at the same time just blowing this pad apart now what should be noted is funny enough that some people in the area just like tim dodd here and and his co-host have been completely just rained with basically like landing pad dust they've all been covered like there was a huge cloud of dust that has just rained over the nearby town so i think that is, I think that's going to be an unforeseen issue that they are going to have to discuss. So with this launch pad in general, as you can see, they need a wider, or they need a big water deluge system. They essentially didn't really have much. They The water deluge system that you see in most rockets, like all the water that gets sprayed first, has a lot of purposes. The first purpose is to reduce sound. And the sound waves kind of can damage the landing pad, as you can see. And it can also reduce kind of like the overall like temperature, of course, to reduce the ability to damage the landing pad. They also tend to have flame diverters. So the flames actually get diverted 
kind of in a archway instead of just directly into a flat piece of ground concrete below you, <laughs> you know, to protect the landing pad. So, and as well, now what we're going to see is that there's probably going to be a, there's probably going to be a environmental investigation now seeing that there is a whole bunch of dust being kicked up from this launch and being rained on people nearby in the nearby town, which I think is an unforeseen circumstance that not a lot of people thought was going to happen. So who knows? I hope no one gets sick from this. I hope it's not going to be like a whole bunch of, you know, I, I was even trying to say in his chat earlier, like, you know, hey, maybe you guys should go wash yourselves because if it is just dust and sand, but if it's just like just debris from the landing pad, the thing is, you might also have some of those chemicals. I don't know. They're probably all burned up. And I'm not a chemist, but who knows? Maybe you have some residual rocket fuel on you right now, which could be a little bit toxic. So I hope this doesn't make anyone sick or cause any like respiratory issues. I hope there is no like medical issues that come from this because it is essentially you're breathing it's a sandstorm all of a sudden that is also maybe got chemicals in it and debris of concrete is kind of like it could be dangerous so i hope no one got injured from this you know again an unforeseen circumstance that i don't think anyone predicted but it unfortunately it is something that happened but yeah that's been kind of my review overall just to kind of look at this separation once more to kind of take a look you can really see, again, these these engines that correlate to them going out. These two at the top have gone out. This one off to the side, as you can't quite tell. I'm not exactly sure where it is. It says it went out. On the bottom side, it says another one that went out. You got one in the center that went out. Oh, okay, so it's all rotate a little bit backwards. Here it is on the other side. But, um, yeah, so a couple went out, but the rocket is still going perfectly well. And, again, as we speed along, we want to take a look exactly at that stage separation moment right here. Right at this moment, I think is important is where it exactly it failed. We see it filled in the whole bunch of smoke. I think that's where the rocket partially separated from itself. We see more, a little bit more sunlight, more smoke. I think something, I think the latches half went. I think there must've been a, a hydraulic leak. There must've been, there must've been an electrical issue or something that went wrong with the latches not separating because as you can see, again, more sunlight, smoke, all of a sudden, there wouldn't be a whole lot of rocket feel as it's all kind of going behind you that'll be splashing in there so it's got to be air just blowing up dust or something but so you get that immediately at that stage separation as it starts to tumble but i'm sure everything will be re re revealed more over time as you know of course spacex releases information and reviews the data as it comes out there's gonna be a whole bunch of people revealing this footage as much as i am right now so <laughs> so i appreciate i appreciate you all for taking a look at the channel and you know just Taking a look, and uh, you know, if you want, go look at Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Shout out again to him. He's gonna be an actual astronaut going on this rocket eventually one day. Um, you know, this launch was also reviewed over on you know SpaceX Live. You know, I see I've got a video here of Washington Post up while I was doing it, and there's coverage everywhere of this launch that was going on. So you can really find it anywhere. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of review videos about it as well. But thank you, DigiDs, for taking a look at the channel. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe down below. And I'm not really sure still how to do these outros. So I suppose I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.